Okay, everybody, welcome to our chamber chat here with the Birch Bay Chamber of Commerce. Uh, just a couple housekeeping things. Mute your mic so we don't have any interference with Chef Brock. Um, we are going to record this and we'll put it on the YouTube channel and that'll be available later on today. Um, and we'll do our usual roundtable at the end of the demonstration just to make sure that you've got enough time to get through it. Uh, I did want to introduce real quickly Sasha. Sasha is our new event coordinator, and I'm going to have him unmute and just give a quick little introduction, but we're really excited to have him here uh, at the chamber with us. And I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, yeah, my wife and I just moved out to uh, the Pacific Northwest from Kansas back in 2019, um, but I am from Kodiak, Alaska originally. That's where I was born and raised. Uh, I think I told Dora Lee and Danielle when I initially talked with them that, that Birch Bay really kind of reminds me of, of where I grew up. Uh, it's a very special place. Um, and uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. My background has primarily been in, in broadcast media, um, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to expanding my horizons. So uh, the first, this is my first week on the job. Danielle has been great to work for, met Trini yesterday and, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm really happy to be here. So thank you. <laughs> well, welcome. Yeah, well, glad to have you. So glad. Um, Thank you. I want to do a huge shout out to Kristen with the Silver Reef. I'm just thrilled that we can do something fun with Zoom rather than just our economic forecast like we talked about a little bit earlier. It's fun to spice things up a little bit. Um, up in the top right hand corner, you can see the little view toggle and you could change it so then you can see Chef Brock full. So uh, Chef Brock, take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Executive Chef Brock Craig at the Silver Reef Casino, and I'm actually uh, live in the Birch Bay area and grew up in the Birch Bay area. So what we're gonna do today, we are going to make a chipotle cherry short rib with boars and mashed potatoes and some rainbow carrots. So first you're gonna wanna take your ribs, get some nice fat ribs. Well, I use the boneless type. Then you're gonna put your heat on the medium. Are you guys hearing me okay? Okay, I got a, a fan in my head, so it's kind of hard for me to hear. Yep, we can hear you good, thank you. All right, so we're gonna wanna put a little oil, olive oil in your pan. I'm gonna get that cranked up a little bit. We're gonna sear these off on all sides. And it does take a little bit to do that. Um, I've got all my ingredients laid out here for you. Uh, you've got your ketchup, your Merlot, uh, your brown sugar, your dried cherries, uh, chipotle peppers, some oregano, uh, chipotle, or uh, excuse me, chili powder, and the dried mustard. And you'll need some diced carrots and diced onions as well to make your sauce. So I'm just getting that all going there. And we're just gonna let those brown up a little. Sorry, you can't really see that. This might be a little slow at the beginning, but it only takes a little bit. We've got a couple sides left to go. Now you want to get all the corners, all the edges, everything seared, lock in that juice. Because it's a slow go when you're doing ribs. You want to go slow and low when you cook those. Otherwise, they're really tough. Okay. Then we're gonna transfer those ribs into another pan right here. And let those hold. You're gonna take your onion, 
and your carrot. Put those right in your pan. You're gonna wanna saute those up for about, oh, four minutes. You don't wanna overcook them. You just wanna lightly get those to, you know, cook up a little bit because they're gonna go in the oven as well with the sauce. So we're just gonna let those sit a few minutes. While those are cooking, I'm gonna put a little olive oil on my rainbow carrots, like so. A little salt and pepper, not too much, salt's not good. I'm gonna transfer those into a pan. And I'm gonna go pop these in the oven real quick. I'll be right back. That was quick. Okay, and those onions are just starting to get translucent. So we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. You got your beef stock. You've got your balsamic vinegar. My favorite, the Merlot. The brown sugar. Cherries, thread cherries. Chili powder. Seems like a lot of ingredients, but it's all worth it in the end. Get everything going in there. Okay. Then we're going to want to get the ketchup in. Okay, you get those all in the pan, get it mixed really nicely, bring it to a boil, get it boiling so you can get all those flavors together. We're going to Take that mixture, we're gonna put it right over the top of the ribs. We're gonna let it go just for a few more minutes there. Um, I've already done the boards and mashed potatoes, which you can find the boards and cheese at any local store. And you just do it half and half, your butter, the boards and cheese, it's a nice creamy cheese. Um, okay, it looks like those guys are getting close. Then we're gonna take that, we're gonna put it over the ribs. So it will look something like that. Then we're gonna cover it. We're gonna put it in the oven for about two hours, uh, depending on the size of your ribs. If you have a bigger rib, you're gonna go a little longer. They should be fork friendly when you're done. Just melt in your mouth. I'll run these back to the oven. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm almost back. All right, so then once your ribs have cooked, you're gonna to wanna to take the ribs out of the pan, out of the sauce, put the sauce in the blender. You're gonna to wanna to blend that, just pulse it a little bit. If you want a rustic sauce, you just pulse it a little. If you want a smoother sauce, go a little longer. I prefer the rustic sauce. Um, it's got a little more body to it. Um, so what I did, I've done my sauce and my potatoes ahead. I've got my ribs and my carrots. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plate one up and show you guys what it looks like. So when the ribs get finished, it should look like that. And your sauce should be like that consistency right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's a nice brown sauce with a lot of body to it. So what we're gonna do, I've done my mashed potatoes. I've got a little salt and pepper, some fresh garlic and the boards and cheese, half and half and butter, of course. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plate that up. 
make it a nice fancy looking dish that's very simple to do. So we're just gonna take some mashed potatoes, put them right in the center of your bowl or plate, whichever you prefer. I like to put the rib right on top because it gives it a nice height, gives it that look. Um, so I've got some nice, nice big ribs here. So I'm just gonna place that rib right on top. I might be out of camera range there. So we're just gonna place that right there. I'm gonna clean up my plate a little bit. We're gonna get some of the roasted carrots to give it a little color. Got some purple and some yellow. And put a little carrot on there. A little carrot on there. Then I've got some onion curls that I made. You can make them very simply at home. You can use a pickle uh, slicer or whatever you have, and they go right on top. First, we're gonna put a little bit more sauce on there. That will give it a little bit of good flavor on your potato. So we're just gonna do that. A little sauce. A little green. And there's your cherry chipotle short rib with rainbow carrots. Yum. <laughs> I wish you guys could eat it. Brock, can you hold that up to the camera a little bit so we can yeah. get a good shot of that plate? There you go. Okay. Okay. Looks delicious. Yes. Yeah. I know it's going to be good lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Sasha earlier, when we are able to do luncheons in person, we should all go to the Silver Reef and do a luncheon there and we can maybe yes, have that. Should. That sounds real good. Oh, we would yeah. love We've to do that. We've got lots of good things here. We'd love to have you guys out here. Can I ask a question or two? Sure. Um, when you do your ribs, you know, I, I've just started doing ribs and, and I didn't know this uh, all the years that I've been cooking that they're so much better if you pull that tissue off at underneath. Do you yes. do that with your ribs? Do you grab that yeah. and pull them off? If I, if I do baby back ribs, I do that. I get rid of the membrane. Yeah. Yes, exactly. On the short ribs, you really don't need to. It's more of a fat. Okay. Yeah, so it's not yeah. the silver so much. It's more fatty, which gives you that oily, greasy goodness for the short ribs because it's up, you know, up higher on the chuck by the breast. Yeah. That's where you get your short ribs. And I use a boneless rib because I don't like to pay for bone. <laughs> yeah. I like to pay for meat. Yeah. So, well, yeah. that is that really makes if you're doing your country ribs, that really it just makes the, the meat fall off the bone if you cook it slow and everything. It's kind of a whole different thing rather than fighting with that membrane as you're pulling. Right. Your, yeah, it, it's a big deal. The other yeah. thing I want to ask you is for the first time, I just bought the rainbow carrots. And I, I'm shocked they're so lovely and they're beautiful, but you yes. don't see them everywhere. You no, don't... They're, they're not a lot of people know about the rainbow carrot. Mm -hmm. And there's all sorts of different varieties of carrots, as well as radishes. There's watermelon radish. There's, you know, so it, it kind of scares people off when they see a purple carrot, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it purple and bright yellow, and you think, well, what? That's not that won't taste like a carrot, but yeah, they're wonderful. Does. They yes. taste really, totally, even better. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, because they're organic, and um, at least the ones I bought, and the, right. the flavor is is fabulous. And I just even thought about them in a stew. How would oh, they cook yeah. up just a stew, just for that, color? Well, yeah, it give you some added color to that, and every yeah. dish if you got some nice colors, makes it pop a little bit. Uh -huh. And I do believe at my market that I go to, which is right up the street from you guys, uh, they have the rainbow carrots. Right up by the freeway off Birch Bay Linden. Yeah, the Birch Bay Market. Yeah, because I live in Birch Bay. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got to turn this fan off one second. My kids were scared of those purple carrots for a while. <laughs> now, now I think the littlest one, he likes them better than the orange carrots. I know. And they're they're so pretty inside when you cut them because they're they're orange and then yellow inside. They're they're yeah. just really lovely. Yeah. They are so good. what are we having for dessert today, Chef? <laughs> I'm on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm not a big dessert guy. Maybe something spicy, though. I'm into the spicy. <laughs> I get told I, the new, I, get, uh, I get, Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Kristen had mentioned the new Steakhouse Red, too. That would probably pair quite well with your ribs. That would. It's delicious. It would pair with anything, probably. <laughs> it, it, yes, it, it stands alone very nicely. Yes. Um, I had a quick question, Brock. What do you use for mixers in your mashed potatoes? For what? When you mix your mashed potatoes, um, yes. what do you put in your mashed potatoes? Oh, Cream I've or got, broth? I, or? I, use, I use half and half for mine. I used to use milk like mom used to, but half and half makes it a little more creamy. Um, then I used uh, kosher salt, coarse black pepper, fresh garlic, and the boars and cheese, of course. And then you just melt all those together. And then when your potatoes are done, you mix them and you have your boars and mashed potato. Sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. With that gravy yeah. over it, yum. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions? Any cooking questions for Chef Brock? Uh, well, I got a, I got another question. What's okay. if I would come to the casino and want dinner? What would what's the, I guess I always ask what what's the main thing on the menu that people enjoy and and order? Would you have any kind of an idea like that? Well, uh, we have different venues, so we have different restaurants. So that's right. Yeah. When it was Pan Asia, it was they came for the pad thai. Uh, Red River is known for its great hamburgers um, but now we have new york steak in there as well which is a good seller and we're doing some asian out of there right now uh ultimate fried rice and uh pad thai and some sesame chicken honey walnut prawn oh, yum. <laughs> everything keeps going you know the honey walnut prawns seem to be the big seller so that for that restaurant and of course pizza nini it's the uh, pepperoni pizza number one seller in the world um, in the steakhouse, it's a toss-up, filet and lobster. Okay, thank you. You betcha. If you want to spice it up a little, Dorley, at Pizza Nini has this taco pizza that is awesome. It's a little different because it has the lettuce and salad and everything on top, and I and corn chips. But I I, I was resistant, and I, I tried it, and I was like, wow, that was really cool. So if you want to get a little yes. crazy, and sometimes they have a monthly special in there. Yeah, the taco okay. pizza. Actually, I stole that recipe. I put that on there from my childhood at Vista Pizza in Blaine. They used to have a taco oh. pizza. Ah. And that was where I got that from. So you um, were raised here in Birch Bay area? Yeah, then I, I area? Was, yes, I was there when the roller rink was there. Oh my gosh. I lived across from the carnival, right on the corner by Leisure Park. Yeah, uh, sure. Growing up as a kid, I went to Blaine High School. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we used to hang out in the bay all the time when it used to cruise the bay and it was fun. Sure. And now it's you know different these days. It was crazy childhood back then, but you had the arcade and all that but yeah, yeah. i and i love the birch bay area uh came back to it i moved away decided to come back i can't stay away from birch bay <laughs> <laughs> that that's a story that 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 is many people's i i was out of seattle i vacationed at birch bay in the summer all my life and where would you we loved it. Our family loved it. And where would you retire? There's no other place. You that know, is correct. Yes. It. <laughs> yep. Huh? Yep. It is I have a question place. for Chef Brock. Yes. Sir, when when do you foresee all your restaurants open again and all your venues being available? Um, that is going to be down the road with different phases, and it's up to the Lummi Nation, the tribe, to decide when we can go full steam ahead. Um, I don't make any of those decisions of course or i'd be full right now no um we're trying to be as safe as possible and that's why i'm masked up even though there's nobody in here i'm working with food so we're taking all the safety precautions we can we just want to keep our guests safe our staff safe and we're going to go slow until it's done right well done thank you yeah. mm -hmm. If you do want to make uh, reservations for the steakhouse, you can make them on our website online. And I uh, recommend planning in advance because uh, they do fill up, but uh, uh, slots are limited. Uh, but if you'd like to do that, you can do that or you can call 
um, directly uh, when we're open on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Is it 50% or are we still at 25? We have not changed our phase, so we're still in phase two. Um, and I know that the state is moving to 50% on the 22nd. Um, we'll wait for Lummi Health to review that and um, we'll change when the where, uh, Lummi Nation changes their phase to the next phase. You guys have done a really great job of being good examples on how to do things safely and correctly during this whole thing, Kristen. I think you guys have done an awesome job. Thank you. That's nice yeah. feedback, thank you. I agree, I was actually there a couple of weeks ago and I was really impressed on how safe it was. Hey, Jeff Brock. Hey Ian, how you doing? Good, I've already hitting up HR to try to get you guys out here some way, somehow this year. So um, <laughs> that's why I was actually down there. Um, we loved our day at Birch Bay it's water slides. So it was just a fun company I, day. I spent a day talking to Jenny, um, trying to <laughs> let her know uh, we still want to get something going. So we're trying, you know, one way or another. Well, we're going to open. Um, we just don't know when yet. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Oh, someone's at my door. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other questions for Chef Brock? Oh, hey man, I'm on a... Can we do our little round table? Yeah, right. Let's see, I'll go from the bottom. Um, Kellen, do you want to give a little update on what you've got going on? Yeah, my name's Kellen. I'm with Edward Jones over in Linden. Um, also part of the Welcome Young Professionals Council. So work with young professionals in the area. We're just ramping up, getting young professionals together, doing a speaker series. So that's why myself and Allie are here today. Perfect. I don't think I've met you yet, Allie. It's nice to have you on our call today. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Allie. I live here too in Birch Bay Blaine. Um, I work at Totally Chocolate as an account executive and do our media. And then, um, as Kelly mentioned, we're also a part of the Welcome Young Professionals. So we are here to just kind of get to know this part of the group, this area, um, make ourselves more known. And then, of course, um, as we go, to try to gain some membership all around for both of each. And I apologize about my camera. My puppy is running around because I work from home during the middle of the day for him. <laughs> That's okay. I think during this whole thing, we've all gotten used to kids interrupting and pets barking and we're back in the office now, but definitely I think everybody kind of got used to that aspect of COVID and how we interact on Zoom now. Yes, he's at my feet right now. <laughs> Matt, what's going on with Surf Pro? Well, we're helping people all over San Juan County and all over Whatcom County right now fire damage, water damage. It's amazing. Right now we're dealing with uh, an apartment building that has these creaky, crispy, brittle water supply lines that uh, many units have been affected by water damage and they're still not going to replace them. So we just keep on doing our job for them and they keep on calling us. Uh, and other than that, my son plays his last football game of the year. He, he's a freshman over at Ferndale, so I'm excited to go see him play live at Ferndale High School. It's the first time that they're really letting people go, but I've I've seen all the games because I'm uh, I don't follow the rules. Are you doing anything with rugby right now? I am. I am rugby. Youth rugby is going to. Thank you for asking. Youth rugby will start up mid April right now. And then also the men's team is getting together and they're starting to practice as well to get ready. They're ramping up for a end of April, beginning of May, start to the season. So if you're interested in playing a super fun community sport, male or female, boys, girls of any age, uh, even adults can play. Ian, Kellen, come on. And <laughs> golf young? is fun too. Uh, kindergarten. Okay. Yeah, and we have we'll have some uh, we'll have some uh, try rugby days and stuff like that as the season starts coming up. As once we get more, I mean, right now everything's kind of up in the air, but things are starting to move in the direction of playing. Uh, they they talked about having flag football, flag rugby, uh, and I think that's actually going to 
be the way it goes, except for the older kids. Hopefully we get the tackle. And the younger kids don't tackle anyway, so. I have a little one who is very sports driven. And as soon as he's able to get in sports, the other day he said, all I wanna do is play sports, mama. And I said, which one? And he said, all of them. <laughs> okay. So that'll be fun. Uh, it is fun. Doralee, you got any updates? Anything going on with Fobble or? You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. You did me. <laughs> uh, we do have some things that are going to be coming out with Fobble, some really important uh, announcements to the community, but I don't think quite yet. But what we're so excited about is the new pedestrian pathway. And I met with Roland on the beach uh, this week and the county is, is really pleased with all that has occurred with Granite and with our community and all. So it's kind of been like a love fest uh, for the last year and a half. People have appreciated what the county has done for us. As a matter of fact, yesterday I met somebody sitting on the bench, the new benches at the beach, a realtor in Birch Bay. And he said to me, Dorley, I've always been sort of upset about paying my taxes in Birch Bay since we're not incorporated and our money goes into the county pot and it could go to Sudden Valley, it could go to Everson, it could go to the foothills, it could, who knows where it goes. But he said, after this project, he said, I'm never going to complain again <laughs> about our county money because this has been so spectacular for the community of Birch Bay. I'm gonna happily pay my taxes for the rest of my life. And I said, you know, that's really cool because there's no way as a city, if we wouldn't have incorporated that we would have ever been able to do something like this in the way of infrastructure for ourselves. So um, we, you know, it's been 40 years in the making, but we're, I'm grateful to be alive to see it happen. And I think that's, you know, the, the big feeling of our community is that this is just, it's, it's been over the top. And uh, so I'm very grateful and I hope that we can express ourselves to the uh, county. I wrote a document to the county in uh, December telling them how much, you know, the community has appreciated this. But whenever we get the opportunity, we really need to give a big thank you to, because it took, well, Jack Louse particularly, uh, the executive who's just said, this is going to get done. And he was in office for eight years and he just kept pushing it at times when it probably would have died again. So we're going to have on August 21st, we're going to be doing a berm ribbon cutting or uh, and bringing the people out that have been responsible for um, this project. So circle that on your calendar because, and Roland also said, Danielle, you'll be interested in this, that He's the special projects from Public Works that has really been a pusher behind this for years because he loves Birch Bay. Had lived here um, through sort of a difficult time in his life and it had just really uh, was good for him to live in this beauty and all. But he said, you know what? I'm high on the poker run. He said, I'm really, he's a, he's a Harley Davidson uh, uh, motorcyclist and he said I love poker runs and so he said he was telling me some of the things that 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 he had done on the poker runs with on his motorcycle and he said that that we got to do that we just got to do that on that day so just passing that on good well that's that was such a fun event last summer I don't know if anybody knows what we did with the poker run that we did over Discover Birch Bay Days last year is we did a social distant event where people would stop at different stops along Birch Bay and we had these giant cards and we'd show the giant card and they could go to the six different locations and then make the best hand that they could out of those cards that they got and we kept track of the cards and they kept track of their own hands as well. And then we had some wonderful prizes from some of our local businesses and it was just a great it was a great fun event. We had over 30 people, well, 30 different teams, I think, participated in it. Um, so there was probably teams of, there was a few teams of 
four or five, and then there was a couple just onesies and twosies, but it was a really, it was a really good time. So we want to do that again. We're thinking the berm celebration will be more of a walking poker run rather than the bicycle and golf cart um, where they could walk along the berm and we'd have different stops there where people could get their cards, but lots of fun. Going to have a lot of fun in the Bay this summer. Speaking of the berm, if you haven't had a chance, uh, I think Danielle's the one that posted it on the Chamber Facebook page, the video. Uh, it's a 30 minute video. I forgot the gentleman's name. Um, Mike Price. Mike Price, but it, I, I sat down and watched that last night. And it's very informative. I learned a lot about the project and uh, the reasoning behind certain aspects of the project. So if you get, get a chance, it, it's definitely worth watching. And if we think it's great now, just wait for a year or two when the grasses get up and it will, you know, it looks like new construction right now, but when those grasses are up on either side of the path and the planters have been fabulous and how, whoever thought of putting the oyster shells around the planters, uh, it's so, it's so Birch Bay. But the other thing is I, I haven't, nobody's told me why, but I, I think it's maybe to keep dogs out and maybe kids and people from just, you know, tramping through there because they're so, it beautifully outlines um, the planters. And I just, I thought it was ingenious whoever figured that out. We'll see. <laughs> Ian, do you have an update? You said you weren't quite sure when you were gonna be able to open, but it sounds like you're planning on it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, 100% we're planning on opening. Um, we talked to the health department this week and um, they are really gonna work with us. We got a great partner who is helping us um, really try to do um, everything we can to open at as much capacity as we can. Uh, the last limitations we had, we were able to have about eight people, I think in our activity pool, but that's gone out of the window now. So um, they're really working hard um, to get us to operate in a clean, fun environment. Um, we hope all our attractions are gonna be open. Um, we're looking at a tentative start date at latest at June 19th, but we're hoping to host private parties and some school groups and uh, different things before that. So um, we don't know what's gonna happen until we actually dump the water. And um, as Matt knows, we turn on the water <laughs> and find out if we have any extra sprinklers going on. <laughs> But uh, Matt might be calling you. <laughs> but uh, no, we plan on opening and uh, tickets are on sale now. We got a deep discount and we are, are asking people to buy um, by now so we can generate that cash flow that we're not going to typically see um, this time of year on a normal, uh, normal year. And we're trying to make up from last year, but we're all excited. We got a great team. I ha hired two people yesterday to, to help get going. We got our PPP loan. One of them, Dorley knows very well. <laughs> and uh, um, oh, so you hired her? Did you? I hire hired her and Logan. <laughs> so they're starting Monday. And my, my granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're gonna start on the front of the building. We're gonna paint that get that looking good. So we're how old do you have to be? Ian? <laughs> what? How old do you have to be? You're too old. No, for <laughs> my son. I'm just getting 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How old is he? Uh, 15 in May. Okay. So talk to me. We can work something out. Okay. We have a few of them, but, uh, and they have uh, different restrictions. So we'll have a chat. Okay. Maybe at the rugby field. I like that. <laughs> yeah. No, we're looking forward to it. We're really excited. Um, we don't know. A lot of hard work to come, but we're going to go for it. So. We appreciate everyone's support. Awesome. Movies too. Yep. We're looking to bring back the drive-in movies this year again, Birch Bay. We've got how many, Sasha, how many nights do we have on the calendar? Seven or eight? Eight. Eight movies this summer. So those will start at the end of June, right after school lets out. And uh, we'll do a one to two. I think it's two to three every month. I think July has three scheduled in there. So be a lot of fun. Does anybody else have any questions? Anybody else want to say anything? Kristen, any, anything else new that you didn't mention yet? 
I want to thank everybody for their time today and uh, coming to see the demonstration for Chef Brock and appreciate Chef's time today. Also, um, at Loomis Trail at our golf course, a part of the resort on uh, March 28th, which is a Sunday, we have a Sunday scramble at the golf course. And I'm going to put the information in the chat for everybody if you're interested in uh, checking that out. And uh, that's what we have new on the calendar. And uh, it's great to see everybody. And uh, Ian, I'm looking forward. I want to bring my family up for uh, some of those movie nights. That sounds like fun. It's some, something that- Absolutely, really we'd love enjoy. to have you. Yeah, yeah it'd be great. So that's all I got for today. Awesome, thank you. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is next Thursday at eight o'clock in the morning, for those who are early risers, we will do uh, our next coffee with the contractor. It may be the last one that we do. So if you've got any questions for either Granite Construction or Whatcom Public Works, join us for that meeting. Um, the link is on our website right now, but you, I'll always post it on social media um, probably tomorrow as well. So join us for that if you've got any questions or you just want to say thank you to Granite and uh, Whatcom Public Works for what they've done here for us in Birch Bay and the Berm Project. It's really lovely. We're excited to have it here. So um, thank you again, Chef Brock. Thank you, Kristen, for organizing this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, and again, we'll post it on the YouTube page later on today or tomorrow. If I may mention too, um, Whatcom Young Professionals has several events coming up in the next month. Um, so if you guys know anybody that's interested, if you come across it, if you can share it, um, we have our normal virtual cocktail one next week, um, next month for our virtual, we're going to be having a special VIP series starting, um, which is going to be a really big opportunity that usually charges a lot to come to big events and he's hosting it just for members. We also have a liter uh, financial literacy panel, which also includes Kellen on there that will be coming up in a couple of weeks. And then we have a women's campfire event in a few weeks as well. So we've got a lot going on that we'll be sending out in our newsletter, social media. But if you know anybody that's interested or if you can just kind of pass on the word, um, we're going to be ramping up a lot of events going. Kellen, can I send my son out to you also for that financial literacy class? <laughs> yeah, it'd be a good time, right? He doesn't listen to me. Now when it comes to interesting. Money. Go talk about GameStop. <laughs> hey Matt, does your son need anything else? We can, I mean, we're accommodating pretty well so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in a couple more years, I'll be asking about my daughter. She's still a too, little young for the water slides. And uh, actually the financial literacy for her as well would be fantastic. <laughs> hey, let him get a car, Matt. That We raised three boys. And well, I don't let him get a car means he, he buys, he, he saves, he buys his own little whatever. The first car my oldest son bought didn't have, the floor was sort of rusted out. So it was kind of like Flintstones. And, <laughs> and he, he, in order to operate it, he had to buy his own insurance and put gas in it. And he was working at Safeway, making, you know, pretty good money and working hard. It was the best, it was the best to teach him business. And the, the, all three of our boys have come back and said, you know, that you know, dad said, I'm going to teach you what business is all about. You're going to learn to operate and pay for and whatever your own car. And it was really good because you have them over a barrel. They want to be moving in that car. That's a big deal. And you know what else it did when, when they were paying their own insurance? It made it so they drove a lot more carefully because to get on the to get on the high paying insurance, you know. Have you seen how much it is for insurance right now for a 16 year old boy? I know, well, our, our one kid ended up getting too many tickets and he had to go on and he was, I don't know what they call it. You know, it's the kind of insurance that it goes up and it was like $700 for him. And he was able with his job at Safeway to keep, continue to make it happen. So it's like consequences, you know, really good for the boys. Girls are not so much you know, in that arena, but it worked for the boys. So just a little word. I know you might have to supplement them, but then you still have a crowbar of events, you know, because the supplement can stop if they're not using their car in the proper way. Well, our kids, our kids both have iPhones and that was, they were both more expensive than my first car. So I don't know, we're doing something wrong. <laughs> I know. Oh gosh.
Well, Allie and Kellen, if you guys want to send me those dates and everything for the events that you have coming up, I'm happy to put those on our event calendar as well um, and share them on our social media for you guys. So just send them in an email or tag me in them somehow. Be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you, everybody. Unless anybody else has got any, what do you got there, Matt? Some lip gloss? Chapstick. Matt always has some fun toys. Thanks everybody for joining us. It was a lot of fun to see you all. And thanks again, Chef Brock. That was a lot of fun. And now I'm really hungry. Thanks everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Have a great evening.